グッモーニンググッモーニンググッモーニンググッモーニンググッモーニング We have a new attendee today. Her name is Panty Stockings.、Uh, extremely amazing name. I approve. <clears throat> so, yeah. How's everyone been doing? I know that、uh, the end has to go in about half an hour's time or so, I think. Because the end needs to get a needle poked into her arm. It's a good needle. So, you have you should go for it. Alright? Everyone should go for the booster shots. Because almost everyone I know has COVID. I've been going a lot, going out a lot lately as well. <laughs> It's not my choice to be heading out almost on an alternate day basis. But, uh,. Sometimes life requires you to go out of the house. And I am completely fine with that. Hell yeah.、Uh, but for a while, maybe this week, I think I'm just trying to try my best to hibernate. I have two appointments to get the fuck out of my house, but that's it.、Um, yeah.、Uh, schedule for this week, Nudible should. Be on track if I remember correctly. Let me look at my calendar. Alright. Oh no. Wait, hang on. Ooh. Once again,、uh, there will not be any nudibles on Friday.、Uh, I can do Wednesday and Thursday morning, I think. I think by then we will finish this book and then next week we can start a new book. Yeah. Yeah, but Tuesday I can't do it because I have an apartment in the afternoon. I could probably do it, but. Good morning, Tatsa! Good morning, good morning! I could, I, could, I could probably do it, but I don't really want to rush as well. I, I don't like, like, you know, I, like, I want to read leisure, leisurely. Leisurely? So,、uh, I, don't, like, I don't want to read with the mind that, oh, I have to need to go to somewhere later.、Uh, it's alright. No worries, Taza. Do what you need to do.、Um, so, yeah, I think my schedule, since I'm here right now and I'm talking to you guys,、uh, Panty Stockings,、uh, if this is your first time here, <laughs> Uh, usually, I spend about 10 minutes just chatting with friends, chatting with you guys, getting to know you all.、Um, before I start reading, I hope you don't mind that.、Uh, I, unfortunately, I need to change my、uh, streaming schedule once again. It's terrible. I'm a terrible streamer. It's not like I, I really try my best to keep my schedule on properly.、Uh, but it's really hard sometimes when I have things to do. So, I need to. so for, to, for this week, it will be on Monday, Wednesday, and Thursday mornings、uh, around this hour, 11 a.m.,、uh, GMT plus 8. Uh, if you're free, come by, drop by. If you're working at home, studying at home, or even at work, and you want to have some background sound, I am here for you. I can't promise that I read really well. I read okay, I think. But, um, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, yeah, I'm pretty busy. For the past couple of weeks, it's been crazy. All I really want for next week onwards is just rest a, a lot of rest, a huge amount of rest.、Um, a 
an insane amount of rest. Oh, that's all I want. <laughs> I want rest next week. I mean, I can't still rest this week, but you know, like, I know DN's been trying to get me to uh, proc P3S. I just don't, I can't. I just don't have the energy for it, to be honest. Like, it's really tough. Um, and also, yeah, I, th I guess you can say that I kind of given up on Savage because I don't have a static and uh, my hours don't align with most people. I go to sleep when people come home from work and um, uh, prog. So it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's unfortunate, but that's how life is. Life is how life is. Um, damn, son. I don't know. Oh, oh my god, shit, hello. Hang on, did I have my uh, channel point set up properly? I don't really want you know, to spam too much. You know one thing about being uh when you're using like the Twitch streamer hashtag, I I'm like thinking of just dropping it because every time I do it, I get followers. Uh, and the follower is usually a graphic designer <laughs> who's looking for a job, and I don't need that because. I can do my own shit. I'm not a graphic designer, but I can do little stuff. And I have DN to help me out. Um, and then the next, like, you get a follower and the next two days they unfollow you because you don't really interact with them. You don't really ask them for their help to pay them. I understand the hustle, right? But at the same time, I don't know. I don't, it's like, it's not genuine. It's, I have plenty of resources on my own I don't really need people advertising their services to me via fake follows fake in the sense of follow me for a couple of days and then unfollow me afterwards uh, it's dumb I, I would rather you not follow me <laughs> if your intention is to get me to hire you then you have the wrong intention in following me. I want you to follow my Twitter because you you like my Twitter feeds. You you want to catch up with me on my Twitter, you know? Follow me on Twitter if you want. <laughs> Shameless plug right there. But yeah, like <laughs> Sometimes I post IRL stuff. Oh, good morning, Endo. I haven't seen you in a while. I mean, in game, I mean, I see you in my stream, but I haven't seen you in a while. In in game. Are you here? No. I guess you're busy. Oh, wait. Oh, my God. Look at that. Maggie, me? <laughs> You you have to be a person who is from my uh, home country. Oh, Panty Stocking laugh because Panty Stocking said this is not their interest. Uh, no, you're not an inconvenience. Sorry. Uh, yeah, I know. I know. It's not your interest. DN, so so there is a there is someone who came in just now. The name is Panty Stockings, and then they sat down for a while, and then I guess they like switch on my stream, and then they listen to me or something. And then I'm just like chatting with people for like that was that's what I usually do before I start reading, right? And then uh, immediately they say, sorry, this is not my interest. I will leave now. Sorry for the inconvenience. Okay, first of all, I want to know, I want to let you know that no, it's not an inconvenience because it doesn't matter. You, you can come and leave anytime you want. I don't hold anyone hostage in my place. 
and also welcome to my stream, Maggie Me. Um, I don't hold anyone hostage. You can come and leave anytime you want. Um, don't worry about that. You don't have to say sorry for that as well. Uh, yep, we have five viewers now. I think people are in, like it's like waiting for me to start reading, and I shall s start reading. We can chit chat a little bit later because I think people are now coming in expecting me to read the fucking book, and I'm babbling like an idiot. Hell yeah, as I always do. Um, so I have my coffee ready, I have my green juice ready, I have my tea ready, and... Alright. Give me one second and then I shall start reading. Today we are reading Lonely Castle in the Mirror by Mizuki Tsujimura. We are on the tail end of the book titled Third Semester Goodbye and the chapter is February. Masamune did not turn up at all in January, but finally, early in February, he walked in. His hair was neatly cut, and at first, Kokoro thought it was some new kid. He had got in before anyone else and sat in the game room, blithely playing video games. Masamune! Kokoro stood frozen to the spot. Hey! He said. His gaze was fixed on the TV screen as he played a racing car game. Ah, no way! Whoa! He said to himself. Kokoro hovered in the doorway, unsure what to say. One by one, the rest of the group appeared. Masamune! We've been dying to talk to you! Masamune, we didn't break our promise! That's right! Why didn't you come over earlier? We all kept our word. Aki said this in an, in an unsteady voice, and Masamune put down the game controller for the first time. His car crashed spectacularly on the screen. The game over music played them. I know, Masamune said. Look over them. His short hair made his eyes seem more piercing than before. I know that all of you came into school that day, the day I asked you to, the 10th of January. Everyone gaps. I never thought you didn't come. I knew there was no way you wouldn't. Kokoro was so relieved, she felt, she, she felt about to cry. Masamune believed them all. Then why didn't you come to the castle? Fuka asked. Fuka Masamune switched off the TV. I needed some time to think. I knew you wouldn't let me down. Yet, we still couldn't meet up. I wanted to think, <laughs> why? I thought about it over and over and... Uh, I came to a conclusion. I think we are all living in the parallel worlds. Parallel worlds? Yep, Kokoro's eyes widened. T the term was unfamiliar, and she couldn't quite grasp it. She 
looked around and saw them all gazing at Masamune with equally vacant expression. Each of us is attending the different Yukishina number no. 5 high school. Yet, sorry, junior high. None of you are in my world, and I am not in any of yours. The world is divided into seven different branches, one for each of us. The world's divided. Kokoro couldn't grasp what this meant. They all look at each other in puzzlement, and Masamune, in a slightly irritated tone, said, You people hardly ever watch anime or read science fiction, do you? You need to read more, he went on. In the world of science fiction, it's totally obvious concept. The idea of parallel worlds. I don't exactly follow, but are you saying that something unreal is happening? Like in science fiction? Asked Kokoro. If you want to talk about what's unreal, this whole castle is completely unreal. You lot really need to get used to the idea that we are already in a situation that's supernatural. Or, if not fantasy, then something we cannot explain. Listen up, he said, facing them all. The world we lived in, the world beyond the seven mirrors in the foyer, seems the same for us, all of us. But it is not. Even if there's a Yukishina number no. 5 junior high in Minami in Tokyo City, Japan in all of our worlds, the people there and the details all deviate slightly from each other. All seven of us are living in our own individual worlds. So... Aki said, arms folded and tilted. What does that mean? It is easier to understand if you think of it like a video game. Masamune looked over at the game controller he had tossed aside. Each of us is a hero in a game called Yukishina No. 5 Junior High in South Tokyo. And there are seven versions of the game. The data depends on the software whoever's playing it. Get it? Each character has their own safe data, and there can't be two heroes simultaneously. My data is mine, Subaru's data is his, Aki's is hers. Masamune looked around at each of them in turn. In the world where I'm playing, naturally I am the hero, and nobody else is there. And in Aki's and Subaru's software, I don't appear. The same is true for everyone. There's only one hero for each set of data. On this game screen, it is set up so you have to choose one from the seven of us. Masamune crossed his arms. It's the same software, so it looks like the same world. But since the hero is different, it subtly adjusts events and small details. Even if the software we are given is the same, it makes sense to think that there are separate routes designed to take us down different storylines. I still don't get it. Fuka slowly shook her head. But I have heard the term parallel worlds. They have been using the English words now, and now she gave the Japanese equivalent. She repeated the Japanese characters to herself, and now she could picture it better. She pictured the grand foyer of the castle, and the light, parallel light radiating outside from the seven mirrors side by side. The lights of each world beyond the mirrors never intersected. Fuka said, the idea was in a manga I read once. In the story, there were as many parallel worlds as there were choices, and the main character had a kind of reunion of all his possibilities, and the, uh, on of all his possible selves from those worlds. There were a lot of selves in all kinds of worlds, as many as the choices in his life, like what life would be. Like if he had married his girlfriend, or if he stayed true to his dreams when he was young, and so on. Exactly! The number of choices is what we I meant by the branches. 
Masamune nodded enthusiastically. Fuka's example made it e a little easier for Kokoro to follow. If only I had done that, then reality would have turned out differently. That was something Kokoro thought about a lot. If only she had not stayed away from school, if only she had been in a different class from Miyori Sanada, if only she had not ever been a student at Yukishina No. 5 Junior High. A hypothetical reality seemed preferably preferable to present to present reality and the more she fantasized about how great it would be if certain things could come true the more reality the world seemed to take on and the branches of our parallel worlds at each of our stories if you go by the example you gave it's as if i chose a but if i have chosen b if we it would be a different world in our worlds we each have a world where we exist, but each one slightly different. Okay, but then what about Miss Kitajima? Kokoro asked. Aki said that she has never met her, but didn't Masamune, Ureshino, and I each Miss Kitajima? Does that not mean Miss Kitajima exists in all of our worlds? A doubt crept into her mind. On that day, the only student Miss Kitajima had been told would be going to school was Kokoro. She didn't seem to have been waiting for Masamune or Ureshino. I guess the different worlds have some characters in common. Characters. The word made Kokoro bite her lip. Masamune was just continuing with the video game analogy. But the reality she was living started to feel to her as if it was all made up, like a miniature garden or something. For instance, Aki and Subaru have never actually heard of the free school, have they? So of course they have never met Miss Kitajima. Right, yeah. Maslamune waited for the two of them to agree. So, in their two worlds, there is no free school. It does not exist. The possibility is that the person called Miss Kitajima herself does not exist there. Or, sh or else, she does, but is somewhere else doing a totally different job. Masamune had clearly been spending his time thinking deeply about this, trying to tie up his ideas. He had no doubt been digging around in books and other resources researching the subject of parallel worlds. And the geography around Yukishina No. 5 Junior High, as we have talked about it, seemed a bit vague, like Kokoro. What's the main shopping center near your house? That would be Kareo. When she said, Good morning, Granola Breaky. When she saw their reactions, she was shocked. Fuka's eyes widened. Don't you go to Kareo, Fuka? Kokoro asked. We go to a shopping mall called Arco, where they have a cinema. What? Arco? Kokoro had never heard of it. Masamune nodded in agreement with Fuka. Same as me, it's called Arco. When you first mentioned Kareo, Kokoro, I thought you had made a mistake and meant Arco, but that's not true, right? Yeah. Kokoro nodded vacantly. She couldn't remember when she had talked about Kareo. Aki's face clouded over. I don't know either of them, Arco or Kareo, she said. Now that you mention it, you asked me where I went to elementary school, and you said, oh, that's near Kareo, and I had no clue what you were talking about. No way! And McDonald's too, Fuka said in a low voice. I often go to McDonald's inside Arco, but is there really one in front of the station? Didn't you and Subaru say that was there was one, Aki? Yeah, in front of the station. Aki and Subaru shared a confused look. When you guys said that, Aki, I thought they had just opened it and I didn't know about it. But when I went to check it out, there wasn't one. I thought it was strange. Do you know it, Kokoro? 
ano there's a McDonald's inside Kareo. Kokoro had tried to avoid the McDonald's since kids from her school would probably be hanging out there. What about the truck selling things from Mikawa Market? It's been coming to the park near my house a couple of times a week ever since I was little. Kokoro asked. It's the small world swirled around her head. The little truck blasting out the song from her favorite ride at Disneyland. It seemed like ages she had heard that tune. It had always made her feel low when she heard it sitting at home alone during the day. Since she had started coming to the castle, she hadn't heard it. I don't know. Maybe it doesn't stop by our neighborhood. But Fuka, didn't we go to the same elementary school? Elementary number s- school number one. I thought the truck drove around that area. She had been convinced that Fuka lived nearby. They had never actually met, but she had always found this encouraging. It comes near me. It plays small world, doesn't it? Aki said. Yes, said Kokoro. My grandmother used to do her shopping there, Aki said. She said it was so helpful. I think it comes around our area too, Ureshino said. But it doesn't play music and it's not really a truck, more like a van, isn't it? The one that sells vegetable and things. A lot of elderly people can't make it to the supermarket. My mother always times it so that she can do her shopping there. She can't drive, so it's awkward for her to go to the shop supermarket. Urashino seemed to be describing something a little different from what Kokoro and Aki knew. And then, there's the date, Masamune said. Kokoro and others looked puzzled. Urashino chimed in. Listen, Masamune, the date you gave us to go into school, the 10th of January, that was not actually the day of the opening ceremony. That's true, thought Kokoro. Then Ureshino said something startling. It was Sunday, wasn't it? <laughs> what? The word got stuck halfway up her throat. She gave Ureshino a surprised look and she looked, co- he looked back confused. I haven't been going to school, so I've sort of lost any sense of what day of the week it was. So I made a mistake. When I told my mother I was going to school the next day, she laughed and told me it was Sunday. I thought you all had made a mistake, but I went in anyway and the entrance was stu- shut. So I waited half the day in front of the gate. No way! Kokoro said, but Ureshino was looking da- dazed. It's true, he said. When he saw his look, when he saw his look, Kokoro was convinced Ureshino had been beaten up a few months previously, risked it happening all over again, and Kokoro had admired his courage in going back. But if it had been a Sunday, well, that changed things. She was suddenly feeling very confused. Even if he had waited outside the gate, there would have been students in club coming in and out, so that really took guts to hang around there. I figured Masamune had made a mistake about the date, so I thought I'd better come back on Monday. But my mother told me Monday was coming off each day and school was out, two days off in a row. So then, I really couldn't work out what was going on. Eh? Coming of age day is on the 15th, isn't it? I didn't think it was a two days holiday, Subaru said. The days of the week were a little out for all of us, said Masamune. They blink in surprise. In my world, the opening ceremony was on the 10th of January, but some of you, it wasn't, right? The opening ceremony is one thing, but I thought coming of age day would be the same for everyone, Aki said and looked to the others for confirmation. Subaru nodded. In my world, the opening ceremony was the 10th of January, the same as Masamune. Masamune and Subaru's eyes met. Everyone was really surprised since I hadn't been schooled for so long, though no one really actually spoke to me. You all turned up suddenly with that hair color. Maybe you scared them? I went over to your class, Masamune, 8th grade, classroom 6. But the kids there said there wasn't any student with your name in their class. Masamune was taken aback. After a moment, he said, Thank you. So you came to my class? Yeah, thanks. 
You're welcome. About that, Fuka ventured, raising her hand hesitantly. She was addressing Masamune. You said you were in class 6 of 8th grade, no? I'm in class 3. And once, when I said there were only 4 classes in 8th grade, you got a bit cross, remember? But this time... When I check, it was true. There are only 4 classes in 8th grade. There's no such thing as 6th class state that you are in. We are in different worlds. Masamune's words now seem all the more believable. There was no other way to explain it. Listen, above the chat, someone raised their voice. It was Rion, who had kept quiet until now. Rion's world was in Hawaii, in Honolulu. Kokoro suddenly remembered that Rion and Ureshino were in the same grade, in the same elementary school, but didn't recall each other. That in itself was pretty strange. Back when the subject came up, she should have thought how odd it was. She explained it away by telling herself that Rion and Ureshino moved in totally different circles. Thinking about it now, she felt disappointed in herself. If that's how stupid I can be, I might very well not be able to get on properly like ordinary kids. I can be a bit slow and don't exactly understand all that stuff about parallel worlds, Rion said. But what you're saying is we can never meet up in outside world. The others were silent, their faces solemn. Yep, Masamune nodded after a while. We could all help each other, Kokoro remembered Masamune's words, his eyes tearful and pleading. You mean we can't help each other, Rion asked. Masamune was silent for a time. Everyone turned their gaze on him. That's right, he said. We cannot help each other. For a while, no one said a word. Urishino's eyes had put up wide open like those of a startled cat. Aki looked down, pouting grouchily. So why we all brought here anyway? Fuka asked, breaking the silence. The others seemed the others looked at her mutely. Fuka was staring into space. She seems to be thinking aloud, trying to gather her thoughts. So each of us is in a different parallel world at Yukishina number 5 junior high. Now none of us are actually going to school. And we can only meet in this castle through the mirrors. That's the scenario, right? That's about the size of it, Masamune said. That does make sense, Kokoro said. She looked at the others. When I realized we are all students at Yukishina number 5 junior high, I had my doubts that whether there could be so many kids from one school who had dropped out. Yukishina is huge, but still, I was thinking, that's a lot. But if our worlds are different, then I can understand it. If there is one of us per year. But we don't know if it's one per year. Masamune said, letting out a big breath, still a little disgusted. He glared at Kokoro. <laughs> Wouldn't surprise me if there's other kids besides me who aren't going. It's like, if there's a lot of absenteeism, pe teachers will leap in and try to assess what's going on or wrong in a certain year or class. But really, a couple of kids might have their own issues and decide they want to take the time off. I hated the trend when teachers study this study schools refusals and bullying and put things into categories like generations and school social background i agree if you and i were in the same class masamune we would have our own personal reasons for not going to school said subaru he spoke lightly and shot a pleasant smile at Kokoro. She felt she had irritated Masamune, who was standing silently now, shoulders hunched. But doesn't that make sense? Each of us is from the same school. We have representative school dropouts from different years. And the only place we can all come together is in this castle. 
It's like there's seven people's worlds. This with this castle at its center, something like that. Aki's world spurred on an image in Kokoro's head. But then, why is it we can only meet here? What's the point? Aki asked. Masamune's expression changed. It's just that. He began looking serious. In most sci-fi and anime about parallel worlds, Sorry. In most sci-fi and anime about parallel worlds, some of these worlds va- branch off and then vanish. Vanish? It's easier if you think of it like a thick tree, Masamune said. Actually, in a lot of manga, it, it's how it's illustrated. Anyone that got a pencil? Fuka took out a notebook and a pencil from her bag. Masamune started drawing on a blank sheet of paper. Okay, so you start off with the world as one big tree. Masamune drew a large trunk and labeled it the world. And our worlds now branch off. He drew branches coming off either side of the trunk. Seven in all. Each of these is one of our worlds. The world I'm in in Minamin Tokyo City. The world Rion is in. The one Irrationus is in. And if there's too many of these worlds, it's better that some disappear. But why? Urashino and Kokoro say in unison. Disappear, vanish. Neither one sounded good. If it disappears, then what happened to the people in it? Do they die? It might be a little different form, dying, but uh, they do disappear. It's as if they were never there to begin with. But who gets to decide if one's going to disappear? Whose choice is it? It's different, depending on the setup of the novel of them or the manga. Most of the time, it's like the will of the world or the will of the god. Masamune pointed his finger, sorry, his pencil at the drawing. The trunk part decides that the branches are too heavy and needs to get rid of some. Most of the time, they use the term weed out. It's like in nature, where those who adapt to the environment survive and the others die out. Masamune looked up. Anyhow, most fictional parallel worlds have to set up with worlds getting weeded out and selected. Gate W's is like that too, no? Gate what? You know it, don't you? I mean, Gate World? Nagaisa's manga? A mega best-selling game at the moment? You seriously haven't heard of it? No way! Nagahisa? Subaru asked dubiously. Masamune looked irritated. Lol in Nagahisa! Guys, the genius director of the video game com- development company. As he spoke, he seemed to give up. Jeez, do I really need to have to start from the scratch? He scratched his head. Do you actually need me to explain the famous parallel world story? You people don't even know the most basic things. I know it. They made it into movies too, didn't they? Urashino said. No, they didn't. Forget it. If you don't know, then just keep quiet. Masamune shook his head as if they were getting nowhere. In Gate World, he went on, the representative of from each of the parallel worlds get together to fight it out. The ones who lose, their worlds vanish. So, it's a story about which world survives. The winning world becomes the sole trunk left. So they all fight to death to their, so their world can continue. That's the kind of game it is. Are you saying that's what's happening to us? Subaru asked. Masamune shrugged. I thought it was a possibility. It's pretty unique, don't you think? For us to gather here? If you are representative of seven worlds, then this is like a world summit or something. There's gonna be something they want represent want us representative to do. And then they remembered the quest for the key. Masamune waited for a moment. I feel like the wishing key that Grant's wishes is suggestive to th- of something. 
Only the world of the person who finds the key survive, and the rest of us vanish. I was thinking about this: how our game plays out. Our worlds, except one, disappear. Disappear. The idea of didn't seem quite real. But Kokoro had her doubts. Kokoro's home, waiting for her when she went back through the mirror. Her parents, her school, like it or not, the real class with Miyori Sanada and Tojo san. How could they all vanish? I can't bear to think about it. And then another emotion welled up inside her, which felt unexpected. Actually, it might be okay after all. It might be okay if they all somehow disappear. Oh my god! No fucking way! Ah! <sighs> <laughs> I uh, apologize for the uh, technical issue, as you can see right now. <laughs> oh man. Well, to the nine viewers in my stream, welcome to my stream. I do a reading session called Nudibles every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. And sometimes Friday when I'm busy, I switch it over to Thursday instead. Um, the reading session is uh, called Nudible, which is a play on words of my name with Audible. I am completely, I apologize, seriously. I'm sorry, guys. Um, Um, and, <laughs> okay, give me one moment, okay, guys, I'm gonna put up a party right now. was playing over me, right? God damn it. 
I don't use my brain sometimes. It doesn't. My brain doesn't load. Okay. Uh. Anyway. Uh, I'm so sorry. Everyone left me because I'm stupid. Except for Dian. Dian doesn't care if I'm stupid. But actually, Dian is not even there. Dian is just AFKing. <laughs> God fucking damn it. But thank you for you guys for being my streamer now. Hell yeah. Okay. Okay, yeah, 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 yeah. let's read it again. Okay, that, par that paragraph. She wasn't planning on going back to school and she couldn't picture herself starting at some other school. A hope had always burned inside her. The possibility that she could meet these kids outside the castle, thinking that the others existed somewhere out there, had been like the beam from the lighthouse shining in the dark sea of her heart. How had the others understood it? She didn't know. The one thing they did seem to share, though, was a sense of bewilderment. Kokoro had not thought about it in ages, this wishing key they had once falteringly searched for but never found. Masamune's stories seem even more believable right now. Apart from the world of the person who located the key, everyone's worlds will vanish. The wolf queen told us, didn't she? Masamune said, that... You know, if a wish is granted, then all of our memories will disappear. But if the key isn't found, and the wish isn't granted, our memories remain. Even when the castle had closed for good. We will, for we will never forget what happened here. That's right. The wolf queens told us that many times. We are here in order to weed out people's worlds other than our own. That sounds right, Subaru said. If that is true, isn't it better not to find the wishing key? Fuka asked. A trace of sadness and terror at the alternative outcome Masamune was suggesting showed in her eyes. Hearing this so stated so boldly left them all stunned. Fuka stared fixedly downwards. And it's already February, she said. We have less than two months. All we have left is the memory of us being, of having been here, right? If that's true, then I want to hold on to that memory. Fuka's voice seems to resonate within the silent circle. Whenever they discussed the vanishing of their memories, Aki had always said that she didn't really care. But now she was silent. Kokoro felt herself close to tears. All we have left are these memories. We won't be able to help each other. It would be ideal if none of us of our world vanished. Subaru said, but if, like Masamune said, all our worlds van disappear, what does that actually mean? Kokoro gaps, and she heard Fuka and the rest of them do the same. If no one finds the keys, all of our worlds will disappear, and the castle won't be here anymore for any of us to escape to, so it would be better to look for the key and let at least one person's world survive. Shouldn't we be putting all this directly to the Wolf Queen? I mean, so she can explain the logic of it, Rion asked. You're listening, aren't you, Wolf Queen? He raised his voice towards the ceiling, then he looked towards the empty hall through the doorway. You heard everything we said, didn't you? So come on out, Wolf Queen! The air suddenly seemed to be stirred by an unseen force. And Kokoro sends a gust of wind like a tiny tornado graze her face. What a dismal racket you make! From an opening in the soft twist of air, a little girl in a wolf mask finally materialized. As ever, she was wearing a frilly dress, 
The red patent shoe on her small feet looked shiny and new. The expressionless face on her mask seemed distinctly colder. You heard it, didn't you? What Masamune had just been saying. Well, I can't say that I didn't, the wolf queen said in her usual evasive way. I'm right, aren't I? Masamune said. We are all in parallel worlds, so you brought us together to weed them out. You are the gatekeeper. The wolf queen turned to face him, behind that mask. She seemed to be staring very intently. Could Masamune have found her out? They watched with bated breath for her to reveal the truth. You are totally wrong, she said. Shaking her head, the tension in Masamune's face ebbed away as if he had been completely mistaken. What? He croaked. The Wolf Queen flicked her hair flippantly upwards. I listened to you going on and on about your grandiose theory. It must have been taken a lot of effort to come up with that, but unfortunately. I have to tell you, it's all in your imagination. I told you from the beginning. This is the castle in the mirror. The place you come to look for the key to grant your wish. That is all. It has nothing to do with weeding out worlds. An outcome which sounds completely terrifying. You're lying. If that's true, then why can't we meet up outside? Masamune looks stern. That is how parallel world works, isn't it? If each of our realities is different, then we can't meet out in the outside world. Then what reason is there to gather us here other than to weed out our worlds? You can't meet outside. I don't remember ever saying that. The wolf queen said casually, stifling a yawn. You mean we can meet? Ureshino asked. The wolf queen gave a small giggle. <laughs> mm, I'm not saying you cannot. You're such a liar! Masamune was enraged. We cannot see each other! His cheeks and ears turned bright red. I am telling you, I asked them for a favor to meet me and they did. But we still couldn't see each other. How do you explain that? Masamune clenched his fist. Kokoro shut her eyes. Watching a boy cry was just too much to take. Masamune, enough already, she thought. That's right, Wolf Queen. We couldn't see each other. But I never said you cannot meet up or cannot help each other. It's time you people work things out. Don't start barking up the wrong tree. Think about it. And don't expect me to tell you everything. I've been giving you clues all along to help you find the keys. The group fell silent. Masamune was still breathing heavily. What do you mean clues? Aki asked. The wolf queen turned to face her and the group felt a force and tension in Aki's words that had not been there before. You said you gave us clues, but what does that mean? Just what I said. The wolf queen sounded neither fed up nor irritated, just even tone and unflappable. I don't get it. You always skirt things, skirt around things. I mean, for one, you're the biggest mystery in the whole world with that mask over your face the whole time, calling us lost little red riding hoods. You're just making fun of us. Well, you are right. I call you all little red riding hoods, but sometimes you all seem to me more like the wolf. Is it really that hard to find it? The wolf queen seems to suppress a smile. That's what I said! The way you talk to us is so tricksy! I'll say it again. This is the castle in the mirror. Where you look for the key that grants your wish. Then I have a question. Rion raised a hand. He waited for the wolf queen's full attention before he spoke. This search for the key. I've sort of been looking for it all along. Under the bed in my room, I found an egg. 
bags. So what does that mean? What? The others all look at him in surprise. At first I thought it was a stain or something, but it's clearly an axe. You said you wouldn't hide keys in any of our rooms, so what's the story? So you have one in your room too, Rion? Fuka asked. The group turns to look at her, eyes wide. I'm pretty sure there's one under the desk in my room. I thought it was just my imagina imagination. It does look like an, like an X, but maybe it isn't. Maybe it isn't. There's one in the bathroom too, Subaru said. The bathroom next to the dining room. I thought it was weird that there were taps but no water, but I found the eggs when I was investigating. There was a laundry basket lying in the bathtub. When I moved it, I found an axe. I thought maybe it was just a scratch. There's one inside the dining room fireplace, said Kokoro. Like Subaru? She had been curious to know whether there was a fireplace, if there, why there was a fireplace, like if there was no fuel. Dining room? Masamune sounded on edge. That means I found one too, in the summer. There's one in the kitchen, isn't there? Behind the pantry shelf? Really? Yeah, he frowned. I thought perhaps the key was somewhere there, so I banged and scraped around but nothing ever came out. So I thought the same, that it was just a stain. They exchanged a look, then silently turned to the Wolf Queen. Where were these the clues to? asked Aki. You can decide that for yourselves, said the Wolf Queen primly. Like I said, you have had plenty of hints. I leave the rest up to you, including whether the wish is to be granted or not. She took a breath. <sighs> But I do make one promise, she said quietly. Even if someone has their wish granted, no one's world is going to disappear. As I said before, once the wish is granted, the castle will vanish from your memories and you will all simply return to your own realities. This will never disappear. For better or for worse, she added. So can I ask one more thing? Rion said. The wolf queen pointed her muzzle in his direction. Rion waited until they were face to face. What is your favorite fairy tale, wolf queen? The question came from the left field and the wolf queen had clearly not expected it. She was in for an instant speechless. Do you really need to ask me? She said. Just look at my face. It's little red riding hood. Kokoro wasn't sure at all why Rion had asked this. Maybe he just wanted to take her by surprise. Anything else? The wolf queen asked. Kokoro felt like she had a million things she needed to ask but no idea how to ask them. The evasive answer still didn't make it totally clear whether they could or could not meet up outside. Hold on a second, Masamune said. Too late. When you have anything else to ask, you know where I am, the Wolf Queen said. And then she vanished. One second for a tea break. The group were left staring at each other. That girl said, you will all simply return to your own realities, didn't she? What? 
to look at Subaru. He was always so mature, so easygoing, so anyone could get away with calling her that girl. It was him. Subaru look at Masamune. Our worlds won't vanish, won't be weeded out. She sort of dodged the question of parallel worlds, but at least the Wolf Queen said your own realities. That must mean something. She seemed to be saying we could see each other, yet the worlds we all live in seems to be different. And no. And no one could reach anyone else's worlds. Wouldn't it be awesome if the others could join my world, thought Kokoro. She could take them to her school. If only she could do that. I said, I sometimes find myself dreaming. A new transfer student had started at our school. Everyone wants to be friends with them. The most cheerful, kind, and athletic person in our class and smart too. Out of all my classmates, these new students pick me out with a generous smile, as dazzling as the sun, and says, Kokoro-chan, it's been such a long time. The other students can't believe it. What? They say, looking at me meaningfully. Do you two already know each other? In another world, we were already friends. There's nothing special about me. I'm not athletic. I'm not smart. There's nothing about me anyone would envy. It's the only... It's only that we had the chance to meet before and form a special bond. We go everywhere together when we move to a different classroom, when we go for a break and we walk through the school gates at the end of the day. Sanada's gang may be dying to be friends with them, but all the student says is, I am with Kokoro-chan, so I am no longer alone. I've been hoping something like this will happen for such a long time, though I know it never will. And it didn't this time either. Shouldn't we make that our wish? Fuka said, startling Kokoro out of her reverie. We should use the wishing key to ask that all our worlds become one. Uh, said Aki. I'm not saying that you can't. Kokoro remembered the Wolf Queen's words. Aha! Uh -huh. So we probably can use the wishing key to make our worlds one, said Kokoro. Yeah, then we can all meet outside. Meet up in the outside world. Isn't that the, what the Wolf Queen meant when she said, I'm not saying that you cannot? But that means making a wish come true then... Won't all of our memories vanish? If we don't recognize each other, then being in the same world is meaningless, isn't it? Yeah, so that's why our wish should be please put all of us in the same world and let us keep our memories. Let's ask about it the next time we see her, Fuka seems determined. Maybe a cryptic way of telling them I'm not saying that you cannot was based on an underlying assumption that they would have lost their memories. Once Kokoro had thought this through, it felt more and more unlikely. But so long as we don't find the key, it's only a possibility. Fuka looked at Masamune. He had been so enthusiastic explaining his theory now that the Wolf Queen had shot down his idea. He seemed to have visibly shrunk. Masamune, Ureshino said, and Masamune raised his head. What? I'm glad that you are back. Masamune blinked in surprise, rapid blinks like the beatings of a bumblebee's wings. Ureshino smiled. I, I was so sure you would never come back, and I didn't want things to end like that, so I'm really happy that you are here. He laughed. See? Right in the beginning of the second semester, I felt awkward about coming here. You were so glad I had made it. So I thought that the next time you came here, I would feel the same thing, Masamune. I'm glad you made it. Masamune cheeks and ears redden, as if he was trying to hold something back. So what happened? Did things work out? Subaru asked. Do you have to transfer school? 
I'm okay for the for the third semester at least because I made it to the opening ceremony. Masamune's voice was monotonic, and he was still looking down. I couldn't find any of you, and then I bumped into someone I didn't want to see. But things are okay. Cool. A lengthy silence fell. Masamune raised his head, but his eyes followed his short fringe. Were still looking down. Lying Masa is what they call me. What? Lying Masa. Masa Mune the liar. Kokoro couldn't imagine why he had suddenly brought this up, but seeing how serious he was, his voice trembling, she couldn't look away. I told you all that guy, that the guy who made this game was a friend of mine. Well, that's not true. I'm sorry. Masamone looked at the video games lying scattered on the floor. Kokoro had no idea which one he was looking at. Yet somehow she understood why he, she, he had felt the need to reveal this to them. It might not mean much to any of them, but it certainly did to him. In Masamune's world, the lie was a big deal. It might have been something to do with why he had stopped coming, going to school in the first place. I get it, Aki said. She usually had a sarcastic comeback for him, but now she seemed to be speaking for the others. Sorry, Masamune said again. I'm really sorry. Once they had accepted that they all live in the parallel worlds, it made it easier to spend time together because they had all given up. The end of the next month, March, would truly be the final farewell. Time weighed more heavily on them. And Kokoro felt determined to make the most of each remaining day at the castle. None of them seemed very interested in finding the key anymore. Fuka's wish that their worlds could all become one was all very well, but they were still resistant to the idea because the, the, the to the idea that the castle memories would be wiped completely. And as ever, there was no sign of the key. Still, they could not forget that it was somewhere in the castle. It was the last day of February. They were hanging out in the game room when Aki came in. That reminds me. Those X marks we talked about. I found one in my room too, in the wardrobe. Really? Kokoro said. So there's a wardrobe in your room, Aki-chan? Don't you have one in yours, Kokoro? No, only the desk, bed, and the bookshelf. Fuka only had a piano in the room. Having a wardrobe suit you, Aki, because you're such a fashion queen, Kokoro said. I am? She, Aki said coolly. She didn't seem especially happy about it. So anyway, what is that axe? Does that mean anything? We were told that the key isn't in one of our rooms to keep things fair. But I wonder if there are axes in all the other rooms too. I bet we'll find more if we look. How many have we found now? The one in the fireplace, one under Rion's bed, one under Fuka's desk, one in your wardrobe, that also measure one in the kitchen, and one in the bathroom. Kokoro was running through the list as Aki said, You know, it's okay, isn't it? If a wish comes true, if someone finds the key, I mean, what do you mean? I know we talk about not wanting to lose our memories, but if when the key is found, we could think about what to do then. But in the end, it's okay for a wish to come true, isn't it? Do you mean you have found the key? Kokoro creased her brow. Had Aki already found it? Aki laughed. No, <laughs> I'm just saying, everyone's memory might be wiped, but we can still have the right to look for the key. Nobody will blame anyone, right? No one knew how to respond to this. Listen, Aki said gave an, and gave an exaggerated sigh. <sighs> if we can't see each other in the outside world, all we have left at the end is our memories, no? Isn't that a bit of a waste? Our memories won't help us. Isn't it better if at least one of us have their wish come true? I really don't want to forget any of this, Fuka said. Aki's smile suddenly dropped. I'm just saying, 
Eve, we found it. They talked this through together already. So why was Aki suddenly saying this? Well, let me know if you find any more access, said Aki. And left to go back to her room. The group watched blankly as she walked off. She's got issues. A lot of issues, Subaru said when she had gone. His cold tone gave Kokoro's goosebumps. She said something was wrong. You shouldn't say that, Kokoro said without thinking. Subaru looked at her flatly. Don't say that. I don't like it. Subaru's words, a lot of issues, bothered her. Time was running out and it hurt to be reminded she might also be in the same bracket as Aki. She headed off to her own room. It had been quite some time since she had been in it. She lay on her bed and stared at the ceiling. What about me? She wondered. As Aki said, if the key was found, what would her wish for? To erase Miyori Sanada from her life. That had long been her wish, but would that be enough for her to return to her own reality to a time before Miyori had ruined her life? There was a knock on her door. Yes, it's me, Subaru's voice. She opened the door and stepped into the hallway. Subaru was alone. He stood there, slim and tall, and she noticed how the roots of her, his hair had grown out black again. He was beginning to look like a weirdo, and now she thought about it. Thought of it, she probably shouldn't gone near him if she got hadn't got to know him before. I'm sorry I said that, he said. I forgot how much I used to hate it when people said that about me. Oh, hearing the gentle tone, she felt suddenly deflated. And I'm glad you called me out on it. I've just been a part. Been to apologize to Aki Chan. Oh, you shouldn't have to do, do to do that. She didn't hear what you said. I know, but the fact remains that is that I said it. This kind of slightly misjudged behavior was just like him. Honest to a fault, but a little too by the book. What did she say? She was pretty disgusted, just like you were. She said she didn't hear me say it, so I shouldn't have told her. She said, I always overthink things. That sounds exactly like you, Subaru. Kokoro might have called him out on it, but the fact remained that Aki did have issues. Something Aki herself must be well aware of. Thank you, Kokoro-chan. Today is the last day of February and I'm annoyed with myself for making us all feel bad. Subaru gave her a smile. Maybe he was... A little too by the book, a boy who never did himself any favors, but that's what she liked about him. Only one month ago, the time had finally come when they had to say goodbye. March. One sip of tea. March the 1st. When Kokoro got to the castle, she found Aki and Fuka already there. Surprisingly, they were in they were playing one of Masamune's video games in the game room. You are too good at this, Fuka. Go easy on me, will you? Come on, this is a competition, you know. Yesterday, things had become uncomfortable as the two of them argued over whether one's wish should be granted or not, whether it was a waste or not for their memories to be to be the only thing left, but now they're obviously getting on fine. Fuka, about yesterday, Aki said, her voice sounding upbeat, and Kokoro found it hard to interrupt them. They must have been found in time to make up for yesterday. So there was Subaru's apology to Aki, which might have been, which might have contributed to her good mood. This was how the month began, the month of their farewell. At school, the third semester would be coming to an end, and the spring holiday would be starting soon. As they had been going into a school, new school year, her homeroom teacher, Mr. Ida, brought her slippers and seat cushion round to her house. Kokoro caught up with him for a while. She had just got back from the castle and her mother hadn't come home from work yet. 
She wasn't very keen in seeing him, but was relieved he hadn't tried to visit while she was in the castle. She imagined he questioning her about where she was, and the last thing she would have to, she have wanted to do was talk to him, even if just to give him some excuse. She was still angry about Miyori Sanada's note. Miss Kitajima must have told Mr. Ida how upset it had made her, so Kokoro had been expecting him to bring it up. But when she came to the front door, he only greeted her with a simple, Hey! Then he went back to behaving like a model, car model teacher again. Kokoro, how are you? he asked. Kokoro's nodding a greeting not angry or sad, just a bit down. Mr. Ida seems uncomfortable, and she wasn't. She was pretty sure he, she wasn't imagining it. Everyone will be waiting for you at school in April, when the new academic year begins, he said. He put down the slippers and cushion he had brought her. She didn't think he really thought that. He just wanted to be able to say he had visited her. If she came back, it would mean one less problem for him. And if she doesn't, she really didn't care. That was the vibe she picked up from him. They were changing classes anyway. He wouldn't be her homeroom teacher anymore. It seemed possible she could repeat a year if she wanted to, but that was the only thing she wanted to avoid. That she would just be moved up along with Miyori Sanada and Tojo-san. Well, see you later, Kokoro. Mm, okay. She nodded. Mr. Ida seemed as if she had more to say, and Kokoro too felt like she should say something, but she had no idea what. If you feel up to it, do you want to write a reply? A reply? To the letter that Sanada sent you. The moment she heard her name, she felt faint. He held, she held a hand to her stomach and patiently waited for the feeling to pass. Mr. Ida sighed. A huge, over-the-top sigh. It bothered Sanada, he said. She felt you were making fun of her. Kokoro took a short breath and held it in. When she wrote it in her own way, Sanada-san was trying her best, so think about it, okay? As she listened to the sound of the door closing, Mr. Ida started becoming fainter. She stood on the other side. Mr. Ida's steps become... Eh, sorry. Uh, sorry. She stood on the other side, stupefied. Some people would never understand each other. In their world, Kokoro was one. This was the one at fault. The stronger ones could boldly attack her because they felt nothing they did was questionable. She felt you were making fun of her. The words whirl in Kokoro's head. She was on the verge of tears. But it was galling to fall victim to their logic. The tears wouldn't come. She beat the wall in frustration. The more she did, the more her palms throbbed in pain. That girl robbed me of my time. She breathed out and gritted her teeth. How could people be like that? Remain at the heart of school life as if the world revolved around them. The thought made her want to tear her hair out. How long? She was standing there. She, de she didn't know. She suddenly heard a clatter outside. Kokoro held her breath. Mr. Ida was long gone, so it wasn't him. And she hadn't heard the postman's motorcycle, so it must be Tojo-san, perhaps bringing over the last school notice of third semester. After several minutes, she ventured outside, but there was no one near the front gate or by the mailbox. Relieved, Kokoro opened it, and there, along with the folded school newsletter, some other printouts and something else, a sealed envelope. It was addressed to her, Kokoro Anzai-sama. On the back, Moe Tojo. Gripping the letter, Kokoro looked up and gazed at Moe's home. Two doors down from hers, the house looked quiet. Leaning against the front door, she quickly slid her fingers under the envelope flap and opened it. 
the letter contain a single line. All right, see you, and uh, thank you for being here. To Kokoro chan, I am sorry. From Moe. Her eyes scanned the line over and over again, struck by the way she was addressed to Kokoro chan. She recalled the moment they had just become friends and Moe's voice when she said Kokoro chan. She missed hearing that. She had no idea what Hojo san was apologizing for or why she had written the note, but she knew she had done it in her own way. She could sense this from his brevity. Kokoro slid the note back into its envelope, bit her lip, and closed her eyes. Listen, everyone. When she was back in the castle the next day, Masamune wanted their attention. I'm going to a new school. They stared at him. I went to look at it. It was about one hour commute away, but my dad's friend has a son going there too. It's a private junior high. I took the entrance exam to transfer the students and announced re the result yesterday. I passed. Really? They all said casually. But the tension was ratcheting up. Starting in April, it was next month. If Masamun decides to go to a new school, Kokoro thought, then that's a good thing. But the thought of someone among them beginning somewhere else made her chest tighten in panic. It wasn't Masamune's fault, but the news hurt. How do you feel about it? Subaru asked. Masamune turned slowly and a little st stiffly to face him. I mean, you originally said that you didn't want to transfer, but now you're agreeing to it? Subaru pressed. Yeah, because it's the beginning of a new school year. I see. Actually, I might switch schools too, Ureshino piped up. All eyes were on him now. I might go abroad with my mother. Not straight away though, Ureshino looked uneasily over at Rion. I told her someone I know goes to a school abroad and she said she didn't want me to go alone like you, Rion. Urashino family sounded wealthy enough to change plans quickly. My mother said it must have been hard for your parents to send you away like that. She said she wouldn't have been able to. It might not have been a, such a big decision for my parents, really, Rion said. Are you coming to Hawaii or somewhere else, like Europe or something? I would like, to, I would like it if you come to Hawaii, though we couldn't hang out or anything, could we? Yeah, I had the same idea for a second. If I go to Hawaii, I can see you, but that's not going to happen. No, it's not. I was thinking about Hawaii, Rion started to say. What? Ureshino asked. Rion took a deep breath, as if thinking it over, then slowly shook his head. Nothing, Ureshino. If you really do want to go abroad, you better study English, whatever language you speak, where mm. you are going. Gave a wry smile. I didn't really prepare, so it's gonna be tough. So you were there. If you were there, I'll go to the same school as you. Don't, don't count on me to play football. But most of the school abroad it starts in September, don't they? The sort of world standard that the sense that Japan is not in line with the rest. Could it be? It could be. But so what? The rest of us. The rest of the world might do it one way, but we have to do things the way they are done in Japan. Yeah, I see what you mean. As Kokoro watches back, this back and forth among someone tap her shoulder from behind. Wow, that's really something. Parents considering your future and stuff, not, not like our parents, right? Kokoro? Aki said this out of the blue. Aki seeking her agreement like this made her feel sort of greedy inside. Mom is surely considering the next step, she thought. She had spoken with Miss Kitajima and asked Kokoro whether she wanted to switch schools. If 
she hadn't mentioned the plan yet. It was out of sensitivity towards Kokoro. But Kokoro didn't know how things were at Aki's home. And so was reluctant to share her thoughts. Aki and Subaru are, were in ninth grade, the last year in junior high, on the cups of high school. Had neither of them taken the entrance exam to high school? Kokoro couldn't bring herself to ask. When Kokoro didn't respond, Aki said with a hint of annoyance, Kokoro? And gazed directly at her. And when Kokoro still didn't react, she let out an exact exaggerated sigh. <sighs> From next month, I'm going to repeat ninth grade. This time, Subaru. Aki addressed Subaru. Kokoro was startled. Repeat a grade? Yeah. I could graduate, but this strange woman was a friend of my grandmother's went to the school and insisted that I would repeat the year. I don't really care one way or another, and I haven't given a thought, any thought to high school. You're going to repeat a year in the same school or not in another school? You mean go to the next nearest school, like number four or something? Aki asked. That's impossible, isn't it? I'll be staying put. Kokoro was smiling over the fact that such possibilities existed when the voice said, I'm going on to high school. It was Subaru, Aki and Kokoro, and the rest stared at him, eyes wide. Wait, didn't I till tell you guys already? Subaru asked, sounding very much like he always did. I took the entrance exam last month. It was for Minami Tokyo Technical High, their part-time program. The news took Kokoro by surprise. I met this man in Akihabara who repairs electronic goods and I asked him about his work. He told me if I was interested, they all teach at the, te te at the technical high school. Subaru looked over at Aki. Her face turned red. Kokoro knew exactly how she felt. She understood the fear, not knowing what the future would be for her, not knowing how long she would be like this, seeing people who were moving on, moving on was enough to make her feel an excruciating pain in her chest. Even Kokoro, who was just a spectator, felt Subaru's revelation was sort of betrayal. Had she been studying for an exam, why hadn't he said anything to Aki? The two of them were both in ninth grade, the most crucial time to be making a decision about their future. She never seemed to be he never seemed to be studying in the castle, so he must have done it at home. Was he trying to get ahead of them? Kokoro thought Aki would feel bitter about it. I see, was all she said flatly. I wonder if you all can meet on the last day. Fuka changed the subject. The 13th of March. Not the 31st, right? Didn't the Wolf Queen tell us that the last day of March was the maintenance day for the castle? Yeah. The day was fast approaching, the key was still not found, and no wish had been granted. But Kokoro was fine about it. Memories were not on the only thing she would take away from it. The not quite one year she had spent here would remain. Morning, Flynn! Making friends like this would be what sustained her. I do have friends, she told herself. Even if I never make any more, I'll know I did have friends. Right here, right now. And I'll have that for the rest of my life. This made her feel immeasurably more confident. Let's have a party on the last day, Fuka said. Like we did at Christmas. And all of us bring notebooks to write messages to each other. I'm sure we are allowed to take them back to our own world. I'm up for it, Kokoro said. As long as the proof remains somewhere that they were all once existed, they should be able to make it through. Kokoro, we have something we need to talk about, her mother said one day as the end of March approached. Here we go, Kokoro thought. As they were, talk they were to talk about Kokoro's academic future, her mother had actually asked Miss Kitajima to join them. Actually, Mr. Ida also wants 
to talk to you to us. Miss Kitajima said, prefacing the conversation, choosing her words carefully. Miss Kitajima said that she consulted with people at the city hall and had permission for Kokoro to transfer to another school. Of course, she could also stay at Yukishina number、no. five and would be placed in a different class from Miyori Sanada. This all came as a surprise to Kokoro. I'll make sure they keep their promise, Miss Kitajima added, an earnest look on her face. Kokoro nodded slightly, silently. Well, what about Moe Tojo? she asked. She didn't like the idea of being in the same class as her, especially if Miss Kitajima had told her. Tojo san was the only one who had informed her about the problems between Kokoro and Sanada san. The note she had received flitted through the corner of her mind. The note, the single line, I am sorry. Well, as far as for Tojo san, Miss Kitajima responded, her voice striking. Kokoro was somewhat brusque. She'll be transferring again, this time to Nagoya. What? Did you not know that her father is a university professor? Kokoro was taken aback. She couldn't even nod. Last April, when they were traveling school together, Kokoro remembered all the picture books inside her house. She had even told Kokoro she can lend her some. Her father will be teaching at the University of Nagoya starting in April, so Tojo san will be going to a school there. Even though she had only been here for a year? That's right. Tojo san's changed school a number of times in the past. Kokoro wasn't sure how to feel about this. She, had no longer, she would no longer be leaving the house two doors down. I'm sorry, the two lines came back to her. When did Moe wrote it? The transfer might have already been confirmed. What was she feeling when she wrote her note? Tell me anytime if you would like to visit number one or number three junior highs, Miss Kitajima said. Her face suddenly showed concern again. What, there's one more thing I would like you to remember. What's that? Neither your mother or I are trying to force you to return to school. Kokoro's eyes widened, and Miss Kitajima went on. If you don't want to go back to your current school or either on of the other junior highs, we'd like you to consider all the alternative. What's best for you? Coming to this free school is certainly one choice, and we can make even. We can even consider whether homeschooling is possible. You have many options, Kokoro chan. Kokoro looked silently at her mother, sitting quietly beside Miss Kitajima. With their eyes met, Kokoro nodded at her. Kokoro choked up. Her mother took her hand to squeeze it. We'll work out this together, she said. Kokoro struggled to keep back her tears. She was happy, yet a part of her suddenly pained. What about Aki and Fuka? Miss Kitajima? Yes? If I ended up staying in Yukishina number、no. five, Mr. Ida won't still like my home room, won't still be my home room teacher, will he? She knew it wasn't right to hate him or even dislike him since he was trying to do what he thought it was right. Mr. Ida told me that I needed to respond to Sanada san's note. He said that Sanada san felt I was making fun of her and it, was, it upset her. But that's not my fault! The words came pouring. Out of her. She wasn't sure if she was angry or upset, but either way, she didn't like the way her voice trembled uncontrollably. Miss Kitajima looked at Kokoro. I think Sanada san has her own troubles, and when she sees how you are different from her, maybe she really does like, feel like you are making fun of her. Kokoro was silent. It's not something you need to understand right now. Sanada san needs to sort out her own issues. Miss Kitajima looked intently at Kokoro's mother. Mr. Ida won't be your homeroom teacher, she said. In her own voice, Kokoro thought she could hear echoes in、uh, earlier. You are battling every single day, aren't you? It was 
as if a jolt of electricity rain ran straight through her. Her desires within her, the desires within her, was so intense to say to Miss Kit Kitajima right there, "Could you please help my friends in another world too?" To stand up for Aki and Fuka and Urashino and to each of one of them. But she knew it will all it it could never work. Kokoro couldn't picture at all what Sanada san's troubles were, but she knew Miss Kitajima would help them sort out. Sort, out, sort them out. Miss Kitajima was, which was perfectly why they could. Wait, Miss Kitajima would help them sort out. This seemed absurd and painful, but that was the pers kind of person Miss Kitajima was, which was partly why she couldn't resist. At the end of March, when the castle closed. And the seven friends had returned to their worlds. What would happen to them? She would never know a sequel to her friend's life. No matter how much she would worry about them. And in this moment, and this hurts. Please be well, all of you. One second, please. I'm gonna take a quick bio break. I'll be back in about two, one minute. B R B. Morning, Exia. I mean, good afternoon, Exia. I just got back from my bio break. Thank you so much for being here, you guys. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank. All right. Let's continue. Let's continue. Let's continue. Whew. Why is this chapter so long? It's crazy. Hang on. One second. Oh. All right. I always feel this. This is a problem with uh, Japanese writers or Japanese movies or Japanese any Japanese medium is that they have pacing issues. 
they don't know how to uh pack the pacing properly it's very weird yeah, they have very weird pacing issue the chapter march is incredibly long <laughs> anyway less complaining more reading missing I needed to stand up, go to the washroom, wash my face a little bit because I was like kind of like my eyes were kind of closing. <laughs> I woke up really early today unexpectedly. Okay, anyone? Okay. Anyways, not anyone. Mr. Ida told me that I needed to respond to Sanada-san's note. He said Sanada-san felt I was making fun of her and it upsets her, but that's not my fault. The words came pouring out of her. She wasn't sure if she was angry or upset, but either way, she didn't like the way that her voice trembled uncontrollably. Miss Kitajima looked at Kokoro. I think Kokoro. Wait. I've read this. I think Sanada san has her own troubles. And when she sees how you are different from her, maybe she really does feel like you are making fun of her. Kokoro is silent. It's not something you need to understand right now. Sanada san needs to sort out her own issues. Miss Kitajima looked intently at Kokoro's mother. Mr. Ida won't be your teacher next year, she said. In her voice, Kokoro thought she could hear the echoes of her earlier words. You are battling every single day, aren't you? It was like, it was as if a jolt of electricity had run straight through her. The desire within her was so intense to say to Miss Kitajima right there, could you please help my friends in another world too? To stand up for Aki, for Fuka, for Reshino in each of their own worlds. But she knew it would never work. Kokoro couldn't picture at all what Sanada-san's troubles were. But she knew that Miss Kitajima would help sort them out. This seemed absurd and painful. But what kind of person Miss Kitajima was? Which was exactly why she could trust her. At the end of March, when the castle closed and the seven friends had returned to their worlds, what would happen to them? She would never know the sequel to their lives no matter how much she worries about them right now in this moment. And this hurt. Please be well, all of you. It was 29th March, the day before their farewell party. Kokoro had already visited two other junior highs. The number one and number three junior highs were compared to Yukishina number five small schools. And the teacher showed her around, who, uh, around emphasized how cozy they were. Kokoro had mixed feelings. She could sense they thought she was one of the students who didn't fit in a large school scale, large scale school. Judging by the cold wind that whistled down the hallways in the school, the heating wasn't on this late in March. She could hear the school brass bands practicing, the cries of the athletic teams urging on their teammates. Underneath, she caught the sound of students of her own age happily chatting and laughing and it made her tense. She knew it wasn't possible, but she still, she felt like they might be laughing at her. She hadn't worn school slippers in a while, and her toes sticking out at the top were feeling chilly. Her mind wavered. She still felt some reluctance about leaving Yukishina number 5. Fear that she wouldn't fit in, and that the others would soon find out what happened. There was still a little time before she, she has to decide. She thought how nice it would be to see others in the last day the 30th and share her decision today she felt like making a trip to Kareo. 
She was keen to buy some cakes for tomorrow's party. Might be good too to take some of those cool paper napkins like the ones Aki had once given her. It was spring holiday now. Even if she failed to make it all the way, she could at least get to the convenience store. Once she got back from her shopping excursion, she also wanted to make it to the castle. She had a feeling that the others too wanted to be there as much as they could. From the day after tomorrow, she would never be able to go to the castle ever again. It was hard to grasp. Kokoro smiled wryly to herself. When she first arrived at the castle, she questioned its very own existence. How many times had changed? How times had changed? As the final days do loom, she began to consider things more carefully. Perhaps all the kids in the world who had dropped out from school were like Kokoro, invited to the castle. Kokoro was in junior high. But perhaps any school kids who wasn't going to school had spent time with the Wolf Queen. The reason, with the Wolf Queen, the reason it remained a mystery was because they found they had found the key and their wish came true and their memories were then wiped clean. They had simply forgotten about it. If that were the case, then it made all the more sense for them to see it to the castle to the next group, since they had. Not managed to find the key. In the Wolf Queen's eyes, they were probably a bunch of failures, but that meant they were allowed to keep their memories of the castle. Someday, she thought, we and the other kids might be able to share our knowledge of the castle really existed, that we had all been there together once. But today, of all days, her mother asked to stay at home as she was expecting a delivery. I ordered a large house plant to be delivered this morning, and I needed you to sign for it. Her mother said. Kokoro was worried, having to sit tight at home this morning meant she couldn't go to the castle, and there were only two days left. On top of that, she wanted to get to Kareo. I think they will deliver early this morning. Okay, Kokoro said cheerily. The last thing she needed was for her mom to feel suspicious, but delivery was not early at all. The delivery man arrived, apologizing for the delay, at three minutes to twelve. So the technically, so technically, still the morning, but just under the wire. Kokoro was despairing. She signed for it with a surly thank you, but she knew showing irritation was pointless. She placed the plant carefully in the hallway. Grab her purse, ran out of the house, jumped on her bike, and raced down to the road. It was only going to be a hit or miss whether she had still time to get to the castle after all this. Whenever she passed other junior high schoolers on the road, she felt herself shrinking and gripped the handlebars tighter. As she had one glove, she thought she had forgotten how sharp the air could be in March. When she reached the shopping center, she was a little confused about where to go. Cakes, napkins. She wasn't totally sure where she could find them, and by the time she had, it was getting close to three o'clock. Just below the entrance of Korea was advertising banners exhorting shoppers to buy stationery for this new school year. Kokoro couldn't bear to look. Whenever her eyes caught anything with an April date on it, she looked away. By then, the castle would no longer exist. Her mind was filled with these thoughts as she pedaled furiously home. Somehow, she made it back. She climbed off the bike and about to go inside. Oh, she thought she could hear a voice, a small voice nearby. She looked up from her bike. The small figure was Tojo-san. She was standing on the pavement in front of the house, gazing across at her. She was wearing a cool duffel duffel coat and check and check muffler, and looked a thousand times smarter than she was in her uniform. She was holding a bag from a convenience store, as if she too was just back from shopping. Tojo-san, Kokoro called, worried she might ignore her as before. Kokoro-chan, Tojo-san said. Kokoro's chest tightened. It has been so long. It has been a long time since she had even heard her voice, let alone when she called her name. Thank you for your note, 
Kokoro said quickly to preempt her walking away. Is it true you're going to transfer? Y yeah, Tojo sang nodded, coming closer. Suddenly, Tojo sang broke into a smile. Would you like to come over to my house? Kokoro's eyes widened, and Tojo sang held up a plastic bag in her hands. I bought some ice cream. And it would be a waste if it melts. Let's go home and eat it. It was nearly a year since she had last been at Tojo Sang's. She was reminded how the layout was almost the same as her own house, though furnished entirely differently. The ornaments, painting, and rugs could not be more contrasting. The floor was now covered with cardboard boxes, white boxes with more moving center printed on them. Kokoro realized with a twinge that it was true, she really was moving away. The walls were still lined with European prints collected by her father. Kokoro's eyes were drawn to the illustration from the little red riding hood, the scene where the wolf Having swallowed Little Red Riding Hood and her grandmother is lying on the bed as the hunter arrives. Naturally, this reminded her of her own wolf queen. Oh, about that drawing, tojo san said, noting Kokoro's interest. It's from Little Red Riding Hood, but she's not actually in it. I told my dad it was strange to have to hang a picture from a fairy tale where the main character isn't shown there. But he said it was only one he could buy. He said drawings with the little red riding hood in them were way more expensive and he couldn't afford them. Now that you mention it, it wouldn't be able to work out from this single illustration that this is about the little red riding hood. But I remember you telling me before Moe Chang, so I already knew. The single clue was the wolf showing a swollen belly and a basket of wine lying on the floor. Kokoro suddenly realized she had called Tojo-san by the more familiar Moecha. Tojo-san didn't seem to notice. Right? was all she said, smiling in agreement. It made Kokoro feel happy. Come over here, Tojo-san said, showing her into the sitting room. She took out two small tubs of ice cream from the bag. Take whichever you want. Kokoro chose strawberry. tojo san took a macadamia nut and they sat opposite each other in companionable silence. After a few minutes, tojo san suddenly said, I'm sorry, she said it casually. And Kokoro knew she was trying to make it sound as light as she could. tojo san Tojo-san had been chipping away at the same spot of her ice cream, apparently carefully choosing the right moment. That's how it struck Kokoro. Kokoro bit the lip. She was painfully moved by Tojo-san's apology, but she responded in the same tone. It's okay, she said. Kokoro thought she knew why she was apologizing, jabbing at the ice cream with her spoon. Tojo-san carried on speaking as though she avoided Kurosai's. At the beginning of the third semester, when I saw you by the sleeper's cubbies, I, I really wanted to say something, but I couldn't. I'm sorry. Things were a little sensitive then. Sensitive? She still herself, certain of something hurtful coming her way. When Tojo sang, looked up and said, Things were sensitive between me and Miori and her group. A yelp of surprise stuck in Kokoro's throat. Kokoro could well imagine what had happened. She sat mutely on the sofa and Tojo-san smiled. Miori and her group were starting to blank me. I was being left out. So if they found out you have talked to me, I was worried Miori's gang would find a reason to be mean to you. But why? Why things turn out like that? At the start of the first semester, tojo san was the new transfer student, cheerful and outgoing, a popular girl everyone wanted to be friends with. She thought about it for a moment and turned pale. Was it because of me? She could feel blood drain from her face. 
I heard from Miss Kitajima that it was you who had told her what happened between me and Sanada-san. Is it because of that? Why hadn't she thought about this? Whether he had any idea of what Miyori Sanada had done or not, even Mr. Ida knew something was going on, and Miyori must have wanted to know who had told him. Kokoro could well imagine what sort of awful things Miyori would do to anyone who betrayed her. No, that's not it, Tojo-san said. Scraping at the ice cream again, she gave a faint smile. That might have been a small part of it, but I don't think that was the real reason. They said I was stuck up, that I was making fun of them, that they wouldn't put up with it. Making fun of them. A phrase Kokoro had heard quite recently, being made fun of. Making fun of. A while before, Nakayama-san in their group accused me of stealing away her boyfriend, called me a man-stealer. And after that, I just didn't care anymore. Dad said that he might be moving to a different university, so I was going to leave the whole thing just irritated me and I gave up trying to make excuses for them. Gave up. She made it sound light but there was a hint of sadness in it. Tojo san took a spoonful of ice cream. Kokoro did likewise. The sweetness slowly melted in her mouth. I probably did make fun of her, Kokoro understood. And our teachers probably think that that's not a good thing to do. Mr. Ida called me in and said so. You are pretty mature, he said. And perhaps you look down on others a bit, but the other girls are trying to be best friends with you, yada yada yada. Yada yada? Kokoro said in surprise. Told your son. Eyes sparkled mischievously. I couldn't care less, she explained. Compared to the last time they caught up with each other, Kokoro found her way of speaking now more direct and cool. Of course I look down on them. All those girls think about is love and what's right in front of their eyes. They might be strong personalities in our class, but their marks are so lousy. Ten years from now, who's going to end up on top, I was thinking. Tojo-san sounded tough, even caustic. Kokoro's eyes widened. She had no idea that Tojo-san had the same negative view of Miyori Sanada as she had. Wow. What? Moe-chan, I never heard you speak like that before. Well, that's true. Tojo-san sighed and leaned back into the sofa. Have I put you off? She asked. A look of worry in her eyes and Kokoro shook her head. Not at all. I've been thinking like the exact same thing. Couldn't talk to them either. And the way Mr. Ida said, You're pretty mature, as if he's analyzing everything, makes me sick. He's wrong anyway. It's not that I'm so mature. Those girls are just childish. That's why I was thinking that if you ever come back to school, Miori and her group would have been tried to be friends with you. No way! Why do you think that? After they did those things, he these things to me. Doesn't matter. Right now, the person they want to cast out is me, Tojo declared. Since they have not done that, if you come back, you might be friends with me again. They'll probably get all chummy with you to freeze me out once more. No way, Kokoro was speechless. She remembered the note inside her slipper cubby hole at school. Wasn't that a sign Miyori Sanada was trying to get back in with Kokoro? Was it a way of ensuring Kokoro and Tojo-san would not be friends again? She had been in agony all those months, certain she was going to be killed, and those same kids would forgive her just for that? She was stunned. Forgive? What is that anyway? I did nothing wrong, and it was me who is not going to forgive. But if there was I was unconsciously expecting to be forgiven by them, which is stupid. Tojo-san looked at Kokoro. It's only school after all. Only school? The phrase whirled in her head. She had never, ever thought of it that way. School was everything to her. 
both going and not going had been excruciating. She couldn't consider it only school. Mr. Ida's words, that she was so mature, had irritated Hojo-san, yet Kokoro did find her a little different from the others. Maybe because she had changed school so many times, she didn't consider she belonged to any one place. To be honest, I always thought you would turn up at school again. Kokoro said Chang. At school again, Kokoro Chang. But the only time you did was that one day, was it? Eh? Tojo Sang looked intently at Kokoro. I'm sorry, she said again. I didn't help you when it was all going on, I'm sorry. No, it's okay. At least Tojo Sang had kept going to school, which Kokoro found amazing. Moe Chang. Are you really changing schools? Yes. Are you worried about going to the new school? I am. But after all the stuff that went on here, I feel less worried and free. I'm looking forward to it. It's as if I can reset things. I see. Kokoro couldn't bring herself to tell her that she was mulling over to switch to another junior high in another area. But tojo san might have picked up on it. If you ever transfer to another school, she said, and no one talks to you on the first day, it's okay to cry. Yeah. Cry. Yeah. In front of everybody. Do that. And a couple of people will come over and ask, are you okay? Or please don't cry. Make friends with them. Cry and you will stand out and at least some people will pay attention to you. Seriously? Doesn't that only work because it's you? You have, to, you have to be pretty, or they won't let you get away with it. You think? Tojo-san was being really straightforward today and deliberately provocative. She didn't even deny she was pretty. Kokoro hadn't thought she, she would believe in a game plan like crying on purpose. But you didn't cry at the junior high, did you? Kokoro asked. No, I didn't. Everyone was kind to me, so I could get by without crying, she winked. But isn't crying a little bit childish? I mean, wouldn't it just draw the wrong kind of attention? Tojo sang frowned. Really? Really? She, she said. Hmm, maybe you're right. But it worked whenever I changed to a new elementary school. I guess I won't be trying it at my new next junior high. I'm sure there'll be students who want to be friends with you. Kokoro knew she had been made privy to her friend's true feelings and it made her happy. Kokoro and tojo sang resumed eating their ice cream. The topic of conversation switched to their favorite TV series and celebrities and when they finished their ice cream, tojo sang expression turned serious. Don't let them get to you, she said, her voice stern. There are bullies like them everywhere, and there always will be. It sounded less like Tojo-san was talking to Kokoro than she was convincing herself. There was a tremor of regret in her voice. There are bullies like them everywhere. This statement sounded as if it was based on Tojo-san's own experience. There always will be. Not just Miori Sanada. Probably everywhere. Yeah, Kokoro said, nodding. She had no idea what she wanted to do in April. And it was 29th March. The castle would close tomorrow. She didn't know what to do, what the future would bring, but she wanted to pledge this to Tojo-san. We don't want to lose, she said. I'm so glad we could talk said Moe as Kokoro was going through the door. That teacher, Miss Kitajima, told me, Moe went on, as if we are neighbors in the spring holiday, that I should see you and catch up, but I wasn't brave enough to go over to your house. But I told myself the next time I bump into you, I'll try to talk to you. Tojo-san's face looked more relieved and cheerful than before. I'm glad we could talk. Before she reached home, disaster struck. She glanced casually up at her bedroom window. It was past five now. Too late to go to the castle. She didn't regret not going anymore. Tomorrow was their farewell party, so everyone would be there. She looked up her at her window again. 
there was no mistaking it. The mirror was shining, but not the usual rainbow-colored light. It was not completely dazzling. A blinding white ball of fire swelling up in a huge mass of just below, beyond the window. Kokoro stood dead in his... Kokoro stood dead still in shock until she heard a huge bang. She remembered a scene in a TV drama where a fire had made a window shatter. This was the exact same sound, with a shard of glass flying in all directions. As if on cue, after the bang, the blinding ball of light suddenly vanished, leaving its image still imprinted on her eyes. In three strides, she reached the front door, fumbled with the key before unlocking it, then leaped over the front step and raced upstairs to her bedroom. She pushed the door open, her breathing rag, then she screamed. The mirror was cracked. At the center of her portal to the castle was a huge fissure. The glass around it was smashed into pieces. The mirror had always coolly reflected Kokoro's room, but now it was in pieces. It looked cheap, like thin aluminum foil. Why? Kokoro shake. She reached out to touch the mirror. She didn't care about cutting herself. Tears rolled down her cheeks. Why? Why, Wolf Queen? Answer me, Wolf Queen! She shook the mirror violently. Her face reflected over the tiny shots, every one of them showing her bawling her eyes out. Wolf Queen! She screamed. Wolf Queen! A dull light began to shine from the mirror cracked middle. It was different from the usual array of rainbow colors. Now the light resembled the pattern of the skin of a giant snake. A mottled black eye, inky gray pattern, wriggled around, glistening like scales. As when the oil falls from puddle and spreads, as if stirring the surface of the mirror, the dull light moved around like something alive. Kokoro! She heard a voice, a faint voice coming from beyond the mirror. In the dim light of the evening, she peered hard into the inky glow, looking for the fish figure of the wolf queen. In a tiny fragment of glass, a face came into view. Beyond! Kokoro! In her confused vision, she noticed more movement in another fragment of glass. Masamune and Fuka's faces! Kokoro! Guys! She heard their voices calling her name. In another shot, she saw Subaru and Ureshino. They all seemed to be there, distorted faces as if being completely Pressed by the haze of dull light, Kokoro went into panic. Had everyone gone to the castle today? Were all the mirrors in their homes like this? She heard another voice. Help us, Kokoro! She could hear this voice more clearly, bell-like. What's going on? What in the world is happening? Aki, she broke the rules! It was Rion. Kokoro held her breath. She didn't go home. He was it was after five o'clock and she was eaten by the wolf. The fingers of her right hand tightly gripping the pink stone of pink stone frame of the mirror. Kokoro covered her mouth with her left and in shock her eyes stared unblinking. Rion's voice continued. Among all the friends' faces reflected in the shattered mirror, she realized Aki wasn't there. I think we are all going to be eaten, Subaru said this. Before Kokoro could respond, she heard Masamune collectively. Responsibility. The faces in the mirror wavered. Everyone in the castle is going to be punished. We were on our way home when we got pulled back through the mirrors. Aki had apparently hidden in the castle until the closing time. From the mirror, Kokoro could see that Fuka was crying. We are all trying to get away, but the howling! Ureshino said, and then just two loud howls. Ow! Ow! From the other side of the mirror, 
They struck Kokoro with force, like being hit by a powerful wind. The sound made her heart quail. It's here! She heard Fuka scream. They covered their ears, wrapped their arms around their heads, and closed their eyes. Kokoro pictured them all running for their lives, dashing to the double stairs in the grand foyer, staring into the mirror that led to Kokoro's house. Kokoro, please! Their voices were fading. She couldn't tell who had called. Fear and shock had clouded her vision. Guys! She shouted back. Guys! The wishing key! Among the cacophony of voices, she heard the voice. Find it and make the wish and help Aki! This last from Leon. It's not the little red riding hood. The wolf queen is... Guys! Kokoro shouted, shaking the mirror. Guys, please answer me! Ow! The howling was the only response she got. The faces had disappeared. Something passed in front of the mirror. She was clutching long, like a tail. Still clutching the frame of the mirror with her fingers, she screeched and pulled away. When she looked into the mirror she, again, she saw nothing. No faces, not the shape of the look of a beast tail, only a dark patch lingering in the surface. Proof that the mirror and the castle were still connected. Her fingers were shaking so much she couldn't feel them. She let go of the mirror and sank down on the floor. She felt a step of pain. When she looked at her right palm, she saw it was a cut, blood oozing out. She cringed at the brightness of it. But her mind was clear and sharp. She had to get back up. There was not a second to lose. She reached her hand into the largest area of the uncracked glass. The dark patch wavered, avoided her hand, but her arm was sucked into the world beyond. She pulled it back and looked at the clock in her arm. It was 5.20. Her mother always come home between 6.30 and 7. She had to do something before then. When her mother came back, she had she would no doubt try to get rid of the broken mirror straight away. Today was the only time she could get back to the castle. She had to get to the she had to get the others back home. Think. Think, she told herself. And along with this inner voice, a second thought intruded. Aki was eaten. She got issues. A lot of issues. What Subaru had said came back to her. But why? The shock and confusion of it all was still overwhelm her. How could Aki have stayed in the castle? It was just like committing suicide. Why would she... There was suddenly no need to think about it anymore. It was obvious, wasn't it? She thought on the verge of crying. Aki didn't want to go back home. She had preferred to stay in the castle, then return to the reality of her life. Even if it was suicidal, even if it meant dragging down the rest, it was utterly selfish. But I know how she feels, Kokoro thought, because I felt the same. Wow. That's really something. Parents considering your future and stuff. It's not like our parents, right, Kokoro? Aki had been pretending to be tough when she was in that mood. What sort of decision has she arrived in her heart? What sort of reality did this girl face that made her feel it was preferable to be eaten for it all to be over? Kokoro couldn't bear to think about it. And a fierce anger well inside her. She should have told us. Aki was an idiot to come to all this by herself, bringing everything to an end. If it made her depressed to hear about what others were planning to do in the future, she should have said so. If she hated saying goodbye to everyone that much, she should have told us. Kokoro, please, the wishing key. Find it and make a wish and help Aki. Kokoro knew what they were asking her to do. She felt crushed by the pressure of all su a sudden. Would she be able to do so? Would she? She would go into the castle and look for the key. The key they had all been searching for unsuccessfully for almost a year. She would have to find it by herself. 
in just one hour. Please save Aki, save all of them. Please forget that Aki broke the rules. Bring her back. And that is where I am going to end today's stream. Chapter March is incredibly long and I do not wish to finish it today because it would take me five hours probably like how Natsume Sosaki's last chapter was. <laughs> uh, I'll get really tired and not happy by then but yeah i think the next time we could probably finish the book on uh, wednesday yep, 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 yep. hello everyone who are in the stream thank you so much for being here with me today uh we had just completed uh maybe half a part of Lonely Castle in the Mirror, the last chapter, March. It was, a, it's a really long chapter, so I really cannot finish it. So we'll finish it on Wednesday. I think we 100% we can finish it on Wednesday. Um, yeah. Um, how's everyone doing? How are you guys enjoying the story so far? I feel very self-conscious when I was doing the howling. <laughs> uh, if you can tell <laughs> the awus, uh, it was very weird <laughs> for me to do that. <laughs> How's everyone doing? Oh my god, you guys! Are, uh, sorry, I didn't see you guys. Terra is next here. Hello. Sorry, I didn't see you guys. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> I'll take a I'll take a picture of us Sorry, I'm... <laughs> oh, lighting? I'm really bad at this shit, so don't judge me, okay? <laughs> I'm not very good at lighting and stuff. I'm not good at G-posing, basically. way too bright yep okay now we're gonna do one over here yeah yeah that looks good that, that's that's pretty good that's pretty good and then we got the end over here yep, 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 yep. then if we focus on uh axia that would be nicer That will be the picture of the day. Thank you so much for being here. Hey, Bit. Good morning. Were you here the entire time? Hey, guys. Ah, oh, my goodness. Um. Yeah, the end is AFK because the end needs to get a booster shot today. Yeah, guys. Seriously. It's, uh, I feel like Japanese um, novelists have... It's not just novelists, right? It's, I think they, they generally have really bad pacing. Um, not just like novels, but they have very bad pacing with like movies or like, you know, manga and stuff. Like it, it, it they usually... Like for example, the chapter in between was like so short. I remember one of the day I just read for like I read like three chapters in a one and a half hour and then now I'm reading like 
two chapter and I couldn't even finish the second the like March. March is so long. And I feel like the moment where I stop could be another chapter on its own. But I understand the concept that they the, the chapter is all divided into like months, right? But at the same time, March is way too long. And uh so far I'm I'm okay with the story. It's definitely not one of my favorite stories of all time. I understand the whole fantasy element to it and the whole castle thing. It's pretty mysterious. Uh, I'm looking like I'm looking forward to find out what's going to happen next. It's definitely like a bit of a, a cliffhanger where I I ended there, and it's pretty interesting. I would say, uh, but the way it's written is definitely not my favorite way. Uh, the the prose is pretty bad. There's way too like it's so Japanese. There's way too much flashbacks. There's way too much flashbacks even in writing. You know, and I feel like it's so unnecessary to have all those flashbacks because, you, I don't know, it would be like if you watch um uh, an 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 anime, and then you'd be like, last. F- uh, last time in this anime, they spent like five minutes telling you what happened last time, and then after that, they spent about fifteen minutes of the story, and then at the end, they spent about ten minutes talking about internal monologues. Kind of, like it just feels that way. This book feels that way. It feels unnecessarily long. It it feels like a a a, a an an hour and a half movie that's like it should be an hour and a half movie but it's fucking three and a half hours long and it shouldn't be it feels that way my only pro that's basically my biggest problem with this book as of now before finishing it is that it's way too long there's way the there's way too many details that's not important at all in my opinion at least that that things could be a lot shorter that there really shouldn't it really shouldn't should not have been this long in my opinion yeah so how's bit uh how's uni all good sorry i was just ranting about the book just now <laughs> there you are <laughs> hey hey come have a seat we'll talk about books and shit or other stuff what do you guys want to talk about uh i'm kind of free i don't really care like you know if you guys want to ask me anything or whatever uh the end's afk so you don't have to bother talk to her yeah notable time is over my babe <laughs> you gotta rewatch it <laughs> But I can talk to you. I can respond. Let's do an AMA then. <laughs> Nuna time? <laughs> I'm just gonna sit here and, and stare at you basically. Like, you know. <laughs> uh, no, I won't. I won't. No, no. I don't. I don't do smut. <laughs> <laughs> well, a lot of things are allowed on Twitch, uh, like deep throating your microphone or trying to fart into your microphone in your underwear. I'm pretty sure that you can do Jose smart novels, but I'll leave that to you, Ando. Okay, you should you should start streaming and do Jose smart. I'll watch it. Um, I uh I stream Yakuza Six. Uh, there are some. Uh, a rated content in uh, Yakuza 6 very very uh, uh, boobage uh, like you know mini mini games uh, in Yakuza 6 and it, I, I was very much concerned that I would get banned for that shit but uh, uh, luckily uh, it has been like 2 weeks since I streamed Yakuza 6 and I haven't been banned yet so I'm still here um Oh yeah, hell yeah. Oh, Yakuza, isn't it great? Yeah, finish Yakuza Kiwami 
Uh, I would say don't bother with three, four, five. <laughs> <laughs> don't bother because even the remaster is so hard to play it's the gameplay if you come from kiwami and then you have to go back to the primitive three four five gameplay because the the, the engine is different it's the old engine it's not the dragon engine so the gameplay is absolutely dog shit it's really bad it's so clunky uh I played 3 and 4 and I completely skipped 5 because I couldn't stand it. It's absolutely dog shit. Yeah. So, if you come from Kiwami, you, you will hate to be a... But I mean, if you really want to, go ahead, play 3, 4, 5. But I personally skipped 3, 4, 5. I went to watch video that tells me the entire story of 3, 4, 5. Uh, so I start 6. Um... Uh, Se I have already start se started 7 uh, I will stream 7 as well But I think probably after I uh, finish uh, streaming the gameplay of 6 Yeah um, I, I skipped game, uh, streaming 6 l yes, last Saturday Because I really wanted to catch up on my work Because I, I, I'm really way behind work last week So um, Yeah I yeah, I I'm I've been so busy lately. I I did I haven't even done the beast stripe. I haven't. Yes, you finish Kiwami and then go straight to six. Uh, but before before you go straight to six, try to I will link you some videos of a guy, uh, who tells you the story of. Just let me know when you finish Kiwami too, right? I will link you videos uh on Discord. Uh, of a guy who tells you the story of uh, 3, 4, 5 in 3 separate videos so at least you know the story before you head to 6 yeah um, yeah because if you come from Kiwami and you go back to remaster 3, 4, 5 it's like it's basically y you are a mas masochist so don't I'm a masochist but I still hate it, so yeah. Um, anyway, um, yeah. What am I saying? Yeah, I've been so busy lately. I didn't really have time. I haven't even done the beast tribe. I know you guys have already done it and got the mount, got the minions and stuff. I haven't done any of those things. I'm taking it slow and steady because the Final Fantasy fourteen is not going anywhere. I need to fix my life first. I need to catch up on my work uh, and stuff. Um, and uh, what shall I call it? Uh, I um, yeah, I haven't done the new MSQ. I I have I wanted to level one of my crafter to ninety so I can do all the. <sighs> delivery, custom delivery stuff like all this. I just don't have time for it. Actually, I do have time for. Thank you. Oh, stretch. You know, lately I've been having really bad. Um. Yeah. Yeah, I I don't think work is a priority. Like, I'll be if I be honest with you. But um, oh, work is why I'm depressed. <laughs> Just, see, <laughs> um, so uh, I I've been doing a lot of self care for the past two weeks. There, that's why I've been slacking on my work um, But yeah, I, I have to do some work Otherwise I won't get paid, basically uh, Yeah So, I'll do things uh, I have decided like it, it, from Since this March or so That I'll do things my own pace uh, Don't be sorry, it's fine It's fine, don't be sorry I'm alright I mean, I'm not okay, but I'm alright. I mean, I'm not alright, but I'm okay. It's confusing because y you feel like you are okay, but you're not okay at the same time. You know, and you know, you know. People say it's okay to not be okay, but you know what? 
sometimes you can be okay and not okay at the same time. So yeah, so I've been doing self care a lot the past two weeks. Uh, I I I've been trying to be more creative. Uh, I I I like to take pictures. Uh, I've been like trying to get. Uh, look for all my calligraphy pens and stuff out so that I can like start. Thank you, thank you. Beat always remind me to hydrate myself. Thank you. So, I've been just kind of like relaxing. Oh, uh, I have like a tattoo. I I I make times. I get tattoos because I've always wanted to get more tattoos on my arm. Uh, I've been decorating my computer wall, like the wall behind my com my monitors, because that's what I used to do. And then when the the big D depression took over, uh, it's just very hard for me to 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 look at colorful things. Like everything has to be black, like. like Blank. Uh, so yeah. I. Yeah, I do like to take pictures. Maybe I can post some on my uh, Twitter. But I'm very scared of doxing where I go, and such because I know that that I I realize that lately I have a lot of uh. People who's from my country <laughs> following me. <laughs> I'm, I'm trying not to uh to, to dox too much. There was one time I, I I I I posted something and then I immediately took it down because I was scared <laughs> that people know where I live because it's uh be because there was one time I posted picture in a Discord, and one of the person who is from my country. I'm from Malaysia. I don't know why I, I like I'm Malaysian, right? So, uh, so what the the person I I re I like okay, just don't, don't take it wrong. I like that guy. Uh, I would like to meet up with him one day. But, uh, he immediately could tell where I live, just by looking at the photo. So I I am a bit uh wary of that. Uh, but I will try to I will try to post some pictures that's like very very like um. That I think it's like, I I don't think I'm artistic, but uh, photography is definitely an outlet for me to to like I I like to take pictures as I see them. So it's like if I if I feel like looking up into the sky, and if it's interesting, I'll take picture. Uh, I I I like to like just look to the left. To the, to the right look down at my shoes and s if it's interesting I'll take a picture it's just stuff like that you know little things um, I can post some pictures on my Twitter so you can take a look uh, I usually post on my personal Instagram but my personal Instagram is not it's never it's nobody you should ever find out <laughs> so yeah um I'm just trying to rest, basically. It's uh, it has been um, it's been a terrible half year. I would say I don't know. It's uh, I would say from March onwards, it was a mental health reset, basically, until now. Uh, if I'm allowed to be completely honest, I feel a sense of loss of self. I don't know who I am. Like, I'm not Nuna. I'm just, uh, like, this character is just the character in the game that I play. You know what I mean? Um... This avatar that you're looking at talking to you right now, it's not me. I don't look like that. Um, yeah, I'm trying to find myself, basically. It's a, it's a weird feeling. I'm trying to look for oneself. 
maybe one day when you guys are all you guys will understand because i'm old as fuck um no actually you know what i don't want you guys to understand i i don't i don't i don't want you guys to ever feel like i do i don't want anyone to feel a sh shit as i do i don't wish this feeling on anyone in this world <laughs> sorry i want everyone to be happy that's all i i want to be happy sorry it got so sad by the end of this um i don't wish even the person that I hate to feel the way I do feel sometimes. So, uh, I hope you guys will never feel this way in your life. I I hope that your world, your soul, your heart, your mind will forever stay pure and at peace and before i start bawling my eyes out i shall go grab my lunch and end the stream um thank you for being once again as usual thank you for being here with me today um i know xia is here i know terraris is here i know dn is here even though in spirit uh, <laughs> uh, thank you bit for dropping by thank you ando for always being here i know neuro is uh, lurking somewhere neuro is always lurking and tazamina pink special shout out to tazamina's pink because she's always here uh as much as she could um <laughs> I wish why not I wish why not Dick is here. Um not because I I want the viewership. I I wish uh why not Dick is here with us. Uh, I know she's going through some hard time and I wish she's here with us today as well. Anyway, um I'm going to end my stream here today. Uh thank you bit for considering me a friend. Uh I am forever grateful for that. I am grateful and thankful for this. This is a mantra that's in my head that I don't even know if I mean it anymore. But I'm grateful and thankful to be alive. But I am not entirely sure if I really mean it. But I'm trying to make it mean something. Anyway, thank you for being here and I love all of you. Have a great day. Have a great week. I'm sorry. Have a great week ahead. I love all of you for being here with me. It, I appreciate every single one of you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Have a great Monday, smooth Monday, filled with love and hope. Goodbye.